<laughs> Alright guys, welcome back to another uh, episode here at Dirt Floor Rebuilds. In this one we're doing something a little bit different. So this, most of you probably won't be able to tell, but this is a GX200 block. So a little bit of backstory here. Dad and I have been collecting these little motors from the tip for like ages. And I got a go-kart, well... A while like uh, not too long ago but like a uh, nearly seven years ago anyway that had a Briggs and Stratton on it that died because it just ran out of oil and I put one of these motors on it and it went pretty well but I'm like what if I modified it so I did I the first thing I ever did to one of these motors was swap a crankshaft so it actually fit the clutch that I had then I started modifying exhaust pipes and then I put a different carby a 30 millimeter mccoony that i had lying around i put one of them on it and then i modified the camshaft with the mig welder i built the lobes up and then ground the lobes on the bench grinder by hand and then ever since then i've been trying to get more and more power out of this and back in ooh, august of 2024 i hit 10,000 rpm But what we're doing here is this this very block is my first block that I modified. So the GX200 has a bore of 68 millimeters and the stroke of 54 millimeters. But the crankshaft I swapped into this block, this is a GX200, I swapped a GX160 crankshaft, which is 45 millimeters which is a lot shorter. So in turn, the because of the shorter stroke, the piston doesn't have to move as far. So you can get more RPM out of the motor before it shakes itself to bits. So what these motors are, they are over square. Now I'll put like a little diagram up on screen right now to sort of explain it, but over square is where the bore is larger than the stroke. And under square is where the stroke is longer than the bore. Under square is normally found in diesels. Over square is normally found in high performance uh, petrol motors. And square is where the bore is the same as the stroke. These are like, I believe the Toyota 2JZ is a square engine. So the idea of that is the over square engines can rev harder because they have a bigger bore. They have a shorter stroke and you can actually get more valve. You can get bigger valves in here than you can a um, under square. So what we're doing here today is we are boring out my go-kart motor to 72 millimeters. So we're going from 68 millimeters to 72 millimeters. That's four mil. That is huge. I... That's, um, I believe, I did the math a while ago, but this motor, as it was, was 163 cc's. And now we're going from 163 to, I believe, 186. So that is a big difference. We're going to get a lot more power out of this. The last motor I built of this, I got 10,000 RPM, about 10,000 and. 80 rpm i want to get over 10,000. i want to go to 11 and then 12 and then 13 i want this thing screaming because rpm equals horsepower as long as you can get the torque in there somewhere anyway that's enough y yappy yappying we're going to get into boring this so i have dad has helped me set this up true so this is all ready to go this is like a test block so we're kind of in the mix because we don't know if the deck's going to be right for the piston height but we'll get we'll get that bridge we'll cross that bridge when we get to it this is just like a test to see if it's going to be okay so i have i bought two new uh, 72 millimeter pistons like ages ago probably in september of last year oh, these are flat dish 
sort of a hot rod design and get that in the light flat dish that looks all right so what we have to do is we have to measure this piston then we're going to bore that out to pretty much the exact same size and then we'll take the rest out with the cylinder hone so i'm going to measure this with my analog calipers because i haven't found the digital ones and then we're going to take some more metal out of the cylinder all right so when you're measuring your piston you want to measure on the pretty much the outer outer part of the skirt just because um most pistons aren't round i know it's hard to believe but pistons aren't actually round most of them they're actually more oval shape this way than they are that way little tip for you so you're just going to grab the calipers and you're just going to put it on there until you feel a little bit of resistance now this is exactly 72 millimeters exactly so i'm going to hold this up to the bore Right, so I can see what I'm doing. So I've still got a long way to go. Now that is 68 and a half. That's three and a half mil to come out. Work that out quickly. And right, so I'm going to fire up the milling machine. And we are going to do another, how many more fair, another five fair cut. And just do it really slowly because when you, when you do it quickly, the tool will chatter because the boring bar is so far out away from the actual center point, it will chatter and that will make the cylinder really well. Won't be a really nice finish. So we'll just, this is like a painful way to do it, but you got to do it slowly. So I'm going to fire up the machine and we're going to, get turning so the way this works is there's a little thing in the bobby here that you screw in or out depending on which way you want to go and this has like 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 all the way around to 90 so if you put 10 fair into this like wind at 10 intervals you're only going to get half of that out here so if i wind that 10 i'm only going to get five so i'm going to wind that what's that at that's about 63 it was about 53 last time and um right so, so you can see how slow it is now i've got to do this Spectacles on. Get started here. what they call in the industry the boring job right now we wait all right so we have finished the first cut um, I'm gonna grab my Allen key and I'm going to wind that till it's around at 80 that should be a good enough cut So when I was measuring this up before, this sleeve's gonna be like that thick. It's not gonna be very thick, so I'm not gonna measure it this time. I'm just gonna go with it and we are gonna keep boring.
we've had a bit of a problem here at the moment. There's all these marks in the bottom of the cylinder. That's not the most concerning. But see that shiny patch? That's aluminium. That means we've broken through the sleeve. So we have ruined this uh, crankcase. That's all right. What we're going to do instead, we're going to ball this out as big as we can go. And then we're going to make a sleeve and press the sleeve in there. So let's get boring. The best way to tell when something has stopped cutting is you won't be able to hear it. That's the best way I find to be able to tell when it stopped cutting. There's a way to work this out. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use feeler gauges. So 9 thou is 229 of a millimetre. 10 thou is two and a half mil, 11, 12 there is 0.305. So we'd probably be better doing a 10 there cut just to be safe. So that's what I'm going to do. So there's a little tip for you. If you need to quickly convert something and if your feeler gauges are metric and imperial, there you go. So. Now, when you're machining things, there's just like a little rule of thumb. Always easier to take material out than it is to put it back. Just remember that. Slow and steady wins the race. 78.1. 78.1. That'll be fine. Be when we make the sleeve, we just have to make the sleeve, it will be an interference fit, so the sleeve will be a little bit bigger than the actual cylinder itself, but that's fine, that's okay by me. Since this is the final cut, we're going to up the speed, I don't know exactly what yet, but we'll figure it out. So we have 135 RPM and 12, I'm going to guess, um, 12 something else. I don't exactly know what the measurement is for the lead screw, but it's 12. 
Right, so we're going to let that do its thing and then we'll come back and we'll assess the situation. Alright, so we have finished the cut, the final cut. And then measure it. And it is 78.1 millimeters. So a little bit bigger. 0.1 of a mil bigger, but that's alright, doesn't concern me too much. So, it's getting pretty thin in here now, towards the back, but when the sleeve goes in, it'll hold it back together. Um, now we need to work out how we're going to make a sleeve, because as far as I know, I, we don't have any bits of cast iron that big. So, luckily I just happen to know somebody that happens to have a foundry. So, let's head over to him, let's go pay him a visit, and um, yeah, we'll catch you then.